Hi guys and welcome back to the Player YouTube channel and today we are going to be reviewing the Range Rover Evoque. Now before you say it, oh it's a catwalk model, it's a bloody car that runs around Knightsbridge. No it's not, it might have been launched by a Spice Girl but I'm sure she's not driving off road in this. I have and to tell you the truth this is every bit a Range Rover as its siblings. The Velar, the Range Rover Sport, it has all the same buttons and gizmos and things on it so it is quite capable but at the same time it is rather a sexy looking car which I think you will agree with me especially this one in this lovely bronze with these lovely vented flute things on the front here under the bonnet as we're talking about the bonnet it has a two litre double overhead cam engine which is turbocharged um, it gives around 240 brake horsepower that's plenty for a car of this size 500 newton metrics or meters whatever they're called of torque which again is huge a nine speed automatic gearbox it's never ending it's a proper proper off-road car although people who buy these probably don't tend to use them off-road but you should do because they're amazing and I have personally experienced in this car some amazing off-road uh, adventures we can say anyway rather than me gambling on let's get around the car let's have a look at it and then let's get inside and I'll show you all the bits and buttons that it's got on it and why it's worth 48,000 pounds <laughs> Round at the back of the Evoque, it really doesn't disappoint. It's as good as the front, if not better. It's got two lovely big exhausts down here. We've got this huge sweeping aerofoil thing on the back here, which I think does look quite chunky and sexy. The big Range Rover badge across here. And the whole thing looks very compact. It's got a very small rear window, which everybody moans about. But to be honest, I haven't struggled with it at all. I've had plenty of visibility through the rear view mirror. Let's look inside because that's where it starts to go a little bit downhill. Um, not as much space as I would have expected in this car. I tried to put a few things in here before we came up and started filming. And it is quite tight on the width. Also, this uh, parcel shelf, it's quite clumsy and very, it's not difficult to remove, but once you do get it out, it's just a pull, you're rather stuck with it, you know, there's nowhere to put it. Again, if manufacturers could come up with an idea where you lift up like that and then put it inside there, that would be fantastic. Although this one inside does have a rather nice little cubby hole area here where you can put your wellies and your dog bits or whatever you want and then you can just simply fold it back down again, which is quite good. But as you notice, I'm still stuck with this. It will go in and it will lay flat, but again, it's gonna get damaged, it's gonna get scuffed. Um, so yeah, come up with a better idea for the back manufacturers. Good tip there. Scuff guards on the back here, essential. You don't want to be ruining all your lovely uh, plastic along the back here. So, you know, it's not bad. Once the seats go down, which they do, and I will show you what happens, because you can do it from the back. If you just push the button on the side there, and then there's another button on this one here. Now, the first thing you'll notice, they don't go flat. They go slightly upwards. It's not the end of the world, but again, you know, little things like that do matter, especially when you're spending almost £50,000 on a car. But apart from that, nearly 1,400 litres of boot space with the seats down. It's not bad. You can get pretty much everything you want in there. So let's hop in the back and just see how much space we've got for the passengers. In the back of the Evoque, the first thing you notice is the windows are quite short here. However, when you're sitting on the seat here, you do get quite a good view out. So if you do suffer a little bit from car sickness or travel sickness, I don't think it's gonna affect it that much. Um, beautiful seating area here. I've got plenty of room, loads of leg room, and the seats aren't pushed right for, because I know a lot of YouTubers do do that to make it look bigger. But trust me, there is plenty of leg room in the back here, and I quite like the seating position. The middle seat, because obviously it is supposed to be a five-seater, I wouldn't say it's probably the best, uh, what I call a jockey seat. Um, you'd be all right for a lift home from the pub or from the restaurant, but spending two or three hours sat here in the middle, I think, would become a little uncomfortable. It's not, not wide enough, really. Um, heated, separate heating controls here at the back. Good point. We do need that so you can turn it off and on. 
and looking up you will see the massive panoramic roof which is superb because of the height um, I'm not the tallest of guys but you know this easily someone sat in the middle here six foot tall the legs would probably be halfway out the doors but um, the roof really gives it a nice sense of surrounding here and lots and bags of light which is lovely so yeah it's not a bad car to sit in the back of but what you really want to know is what's it like up front so let's go around into the front and have a look Up front, it's a very comfortable seating position. It's a multi-adjustable electronic seat, so you can get it in almost the perfect position that you want. As you're looking round inside the car, let's talk about, first of all, the double cup holder, because that is the most important for all of us, as we know. And there's a 12-volt adapter there as well. Inside here, just pop it up. There are two USB ports, an HDMI port, and yet again, another 12 volt adapter, which is superb. And it's quite big to get your hand in there, so you can put your little bits and pieces in there, like your iPhone, and just keeps them out of the way nicely. Um, to adjust this is quite simple. You just slide it forward, and it gives you quite a nice armrest. Unlike on the big Range Rovers, or say the big Ranger, it's sibling, should I say, it doesn't have an arm that comes down where you have the... I find that quite awkward so I like that, I think it's rather nice and it slides back very easily this can all be put away as well with a nice little slidable panel there which is rather nice now as I said at the beginning of this this car is no different to the bigger Range Rovers that are on the market so you know looking here you've got all the same off-road settings here that you do have on the bigger and more expensive cars. Um, it's a nine speed automatic gearbox, I mentioned that at the beginning. It's also a keyless ignition system. So let's start it up. And the two litre diesel roars into life. So the one thing I love about all Range Rovers, it was prerequisite that these big chunky dials here were made that way. And the reason was because if you own one of these, you are expected to be out and prop most likely in the cold. So you'd have gloves on. You don't really want to take them off when you get in. So the whole idea of these massive chunky dials, everything you see here, wasn't necessarily for cosmetic reasons. It was because if you've got your gloves on, you can still turn your heating up. And as you'll see here, you can put your heated seat on. The best thing about modern Range Rovers is the actual panel here which gives you the readout on everything and you can adjust everything from this panel so not only has it got a really good sat nav which I'll push into life now um, I hate some of the other cars that use sat navs that already exist for example the Garmin which I really detest it's just so it just looks very basic this is smooth it's very easy to operate steering wheel everything you want on here telephone system here lovely little button here which heats your steering wheel a super super little accessory well worth paying for over here you have your cruise control again very very simple to use and at that point I will turn my phone off because although I put it on silent someone managed to get past the silence bit so we'll ignore them for a minute um, and as you can see it's come up on the screen as well fantastic um, paddles so if you want to go into sports mode down here you can then go straight into paddles and you've got a pretty quick car 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds and a top speed of around 135 miles an hour so it's no slouch either I love the finish on this some lovely leather everywhere this is what you expect for the money you want the decent finish you want the quality you want the luxury one thing I will point out the panel here can be a bit of a bind, a bit of a blind spot. You have to watch that. Junctions, it is quite thick and it does get in the way. And the only other thing, and I'm probably nitpicking a little bit here, but if the sunroof, you know, the panoramic roof had come slightly more forward, it would have been nicer and given it a little bit more light. But neither here nor there. I really am nitpicking there. Um, got a little place to put your sunglasses up here, which is rather nice because you don't want to scratch them and it's padded inside as well very nice indeed and a very simple button here to close the panoramic roof so 
all in all, this car really does tick all the boxes. You've got everything on it, but then we are going to expect that from a Range Rover. And to be honest, I'm a big Range Rover Land Rover fan, as you all probably know. So my money is definitely on the Evoque. I think it's a great car. Um, let's get it out on the road and see what it goes like, because that's the most important thing of all. So out on the road, the Evoque really doesn't disappoint. It's roomy, airy, plenty of light coming through. Um, the nine-speed gearbox, when you're up in the top gears, is fantastic. You put it into cruise mode and you can just drive for hundreds and hundreds of miles. I really think it's a great value for money per car because it's packed full of tech. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It is a Range Rover through and through. Um, my only concern is that Range Rover did say it will do 54 miles to the gallon. I found I've been averaging around about 32 to 35, so that's not quite as good as what they're saying. However, if you're going to buy a car like this, a lot of it is for the look and for the prestige of having the Range Rover. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, then please subscribe. It's quite simple. And I look forward to seeing you next week with another fantastic car. Oh, my God.